You're watching News 25. Local coverage you can count on. News 25 is brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law, voted best of Las Vegas. Give them a call, 702-727-9900. News 25 is also brought to you by Desert View Hospital. You can count on us. Hi there. Today is Wednesday, December 6, 2023. Welcome to News 25. I'm Missy Kohler. Earlier today, UNLV had an active shooter situation that caused the surrounding area to shut down. Rory Roselle has the story. At approximately 11.53 a.m. today, the University of Nevada, otherwise known as UNLV, reported on social media that university police were responding to a report of shots fired at Frank and Estella Beam Hall, which is located on the UNLV campus. At 11.59 a.m., campus police confirmed that there was an active shooter and to avoid the area. At around 12.56 p.m., police reported that there was a suspect that had been found and was deceased. According to a Las Vegas sheriff, there was allegedly no further threat and no motive had been identified, though there were three victims with unknown injuries that were reported to nearby hospitals. The following highways have been shut down while investigations continue, and the highways are Maryland Parkway and Swenson from Tropicana to Flamingo Road, as well as I-15 northbound from Blue Diamond to Charleston Parkway. UNLV, CSN, and NSHE have closed all classes for the remainder of the day. Also, the UNLV versus Dayton University basketball game that was to appear at home today was canceled due to the occurring events. A hotline phone number has been set up for those impacted by the active shooter. You can give them a call at 702 455 slash aid. Or for reunification and victim services, you can go to the website www.faceofsouthernnevada.org. A shooting in Las Vegas at Sand Hill in Charleston has left four wounded, one dead, and the suspect is currently at large. David Preston has more on this story. On Friday, December 1st at around 5.34 p.m., Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department received reports of multiple victims shot at the intersection of Sand Hill and Charleston in Las Vegas. Responding patrol officers located an unhoused encampment with five males suffering from gunshot wounds. All five were taken to UMC trauma where one of the victims was pronounced deceased. A second victim was in critical condition, and three victims were listed in stable condition. Detectives obtained this video where the suspect is seen running past a nearby business. He enters a dark-colored SUV and leaves the area. In this video, you can see the SUV drive north on Sand Hill Road. It turns around and heads south on Sand Hill and then stops. The suspect runs south on Sand Hill and gets into the passenger side of the waiting dark-colored SUV. If you have any information about this incident, please contact LVMPD Homicide at homicide at LVMPD.com or by phone 702-828-3521 or Crime Stoppers at 702-385-385. 5555 or Crime Stoppers of NV.com. The death toll has risen once again for the war between Israel and Hamas. Meanwhile, it has been reported that Hamas sexually assaulted victims during their initial attack. Israel's expansion of their ground offensive to southern Gaza has resulted in the displacement of tens of thousands more Palestinians and has worsened the humanitarian crisis that has been ongoing for the Gaza Strip. The fighting has prevented the distribution of any food, water, and medicine outside of the small area by the Egypt border, aka the Rafah Crossing. Meanwhile, new military evacuation orders have limited the areas where Palestinians can seek safety, as well as pushing large large numbers of civilians toward the sealed-off border with Egypt. In case you don't remember, Egypt has refused any mass influx of refugees, believing that Israel won't let them back into Gaza and that it would undermine the decades-old peace treaty between Egypt and Israel. According to the United Nations, 80% of Gaza's population, 
or 1.87 million, have been driven from their homes since the start of the war. Due to cuts in main fiber routes, all telecom services have been shut down as well. Gaza has also been without electricity since the first week of the war. Meanwhile, the death toll has risen once again, according to the health ministry in Gaza. The death toll has now surpassed 16,248, with over 42,000 now wounded. While the ministry does not differentiate between civilians and combatant deaths, 70% of the reported deaths are women and children. According to the ministry, specifically over 6,000 children and 4,000 women have been killed during the war. These figures have shown a sharp increase in deaths once the week-long truce between Israel and Hamas ceased on December 1st. According to the health ministry, once the fighting began again, over 1,000 Palestinians were killed. Late December 5th, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu stated that the Gaza Strip must be demilitarized after after the war with Hamas, he continued to state that, in order for Gaza to be demilitarized, there is only one force which can ensure this demilitarization, and this force is the Israel Defense Forces. No international force can be responsible for this. Earlier today, it was also reported that sexual assault was included in the atrocities that occurred during the October 7th attack that ignited the current war. Netanyahu spoke on this matter as well, stating that, I have heard, and you have have heard of the sexual abuse and rape incidents of unparalleled cruelty, but I have to say that until a few days ago, I did not hear the human rights organization. I did not hear the women's organization. I did not hear the UN. I did not hear their cry. And I say to them, where are you? Are you silent because we're talking about Jewish women? Netanyahu further expressed his displeasure on the matter, saying that he expects all civilized leaders, governments, and nations to speak up against this atrocity. The structure fire that occurred in Las Vegas earlier this week has now been designated as arson, following an arrest. Anthony Roberts has the details. In a shocking revelation, the Clark County Fire Department has officially declared the fire that engulfed a residential property on West Viking Road on December 4th as an act of arson. Fire investigators estimate the damage caused by the deliberate blaze to be approximately $2 million. Las Vegas Metro Police Department wasted no time in their pursuit of justice and swiftly apprehended a suspect linked to the heinous crime. Maritza Muller, a 41-year-old individual, has been taken into custody. Muller now faces faces charges of first-degree arson and false statement to obstruct a public officer in connection with this devastating incident. The aftermath of the fire has left 32 individuals displaced and in need of immediate assistance. The Red Cross of Southern Nevada has stepped in to provide support and aid to those affected. The organization is encouraging anyone impacted by the incident to reach out for help by calling 1-800-RED-CROSS. After the break, we'll have Wanted Wednesday. Stay with us. You're watching News 25. Local coverage you can count on. This segment of the news is brought to you by John Air. For all your heating and air conditioning needs, call 775-751-2372. Welcome back. The Nye County Sheriff's Office is looking for a male identified as Damon Pugh. Damon Pugh is wanted on multiple different felony warrants related to both forgery and identity theft. These warrants are nationwide and are without bail. Anyone with information leading to his location can call the Nye County Sheriff's Office at 775-751-7000, or you can call Crime Stoppers at 702-385-5555. There may be a cash reward available. The Pahrump Holiday Task Force are going to be hosting the annual holiday dinner on December 23rd. News 25 caught up with Linda Wright to tell us about it. Merry Christmas, Pahrump, and I want to welcome you today and invite you to the Pahrump Holiday Task Force's annual community Christmas dinner, which will be Saturday, December 23rd from 11 to 2 at the Nye Communities Coalition. This is our annual sit-down dinner for the entire community. We will be offering a ham dinner with all the trimmings, and we will be having a visit from Santa Claus 
and we will be honoring our vets as usual and we will be having a coat room where you can come and get jackets and coats and scarves and knitted scarves and hats and if you need them so please come visit us on Saturday December 23rd from 11 to 2 and we're doing a coat drive so please look around town for our donation boxes and we're teaming up with the Salvation Army this year so please come out and donate to our coat drive so that we do have those jackets and coats to give out at our Christmas dinner so please come out and join us and remember it's free to the community and we do have music and entertainment by Johnny V our Elvis so please come out and join us Merry Christmas this month is Seasonal Affect Disorder Awareness Month, and RJ Camacho is here to tell you about it. This month is Seasonal Affective Disorder Awareness Month, but many might be wondering just what even is Seasonal Affective Disorder? Well, Seasonal Affective Disorder, or SAD, is a type of depression that happens during certain seasons of the year, most often during fall or winter. According to an article from HopkinsMedicine.org, a site for a school of medicine based in Baltimore, Maryland, it is believed that a chemical change in the brain occurs due to the shorter days and less daylight. However, even though it is most believed to occur during fall or winter, there are two patterns of seasonal affective disorder, a winter pattern SAD and a summer pattern SAD. Winter pattern SAD symptoms include oversleeping or hypersomnia, overeating, particularly with a craving for carbohydrates, which can lead to weight gain, and social withdrawal or a feeling of hibernating. Summer pattern SAD symptoms include trouble sleeping or insomnia, poor appetite, leading to weight loss, restlessness and agitation, anxiety, or violent or aggressive behavior. According to the National Institute of Mental Health, it is estimated that millions of Americans experience SAD, although many may not know they have this common disorder. In most cases, seasonal affective disorder can begin in young adulthood. Seasonal affective disorder is much more often found in women than so in men, and winter pattern SAD is more common than summer pattern SAD. SAD tends to be more common for people who already have other mental disorders, such as attention deficit, hyperactivity disorder, eating disorders, anxiety disorders, depression, bipolar disorders, and panic disorders. Now that you know all of this information and you think you may have seasonal affective disorder, what can you do about it? The National Institute of Mental Health recommends four kinds of treatments for people suffering from SAD. The first is a light therapy. Light therapy has been a treatment for winter pattern SAD since the 1980s. This treatment involves sitting in front of a very bright light box of approximately 10,000 lux every day for about 30 to 45 minutes. This is typically done first thing in the morning from fall until spring. While this is a safe treatment for most, people with certain eye diseases or taking certain medications may experience increased sensitivity to sunlight and may need to use alternative treatments. Consult with your doctor before trying this treatment. Psychotherapy. Psychotherapy, which is just a fancy way of saying regular therapy, can help those with seasonal affective disorder by teaching new ways of thinking and behaving as well as changing the habits that can contribute to depression. You can learn more about psychotherapy by visiting nimh.nih.com. Gov. Antidepressant medications. Medications used for treating depression, or antidepressants, can be effective against seasonal affective disorder when used alone or in combination with talk therapy. According to the National Institute for Mental Health, antidepressants work by changing how the brain produces or uses certain chemicals involved in mood or stress. However, you should not use antidepressants unless it is specifically prescribed to you. Keep in mind as well that antidepressants do not instantly take effect. Lastly, the most simple way of treating seasonal affective disorder, specifically winter pattern SAD, is by taking vitamin D supplements. This is due to many of those who experience winter pattern SAD also have a vitamin D deficiency. However, the National Institute of Mental Health have noted that studies using vitamin D as a treatment for seasonal affective disorder have been very mixed in results. Some studies indicate that the treatment is as effective as light therapy, while other studies seemingly find no effect. Always be sure to talk to a healthcare provider as well before attempting something like this as well, as vitamin D can interact with other medications you could already be taking. 
Here's Mikey with a look at sports. Time now for your News 25 look at sports. Golden Knights in the first game of the home at home against the St. Louis Blues from T-Mobile Arena on Monday. They fell 2-1 in overtime tonight there in St. Louis. The 2024 draft will be held at, wait for it, the Sphere in Las Vegas. That's happening June 28th and 29th. I need a press pass. Hint, hint. Raiders host the Minnesota Vikings this Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. The Raiders have named defensive end Max Crosby as the team's nominee for the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award. The award is bestowed each year to the NFL player who excels on the field and demonstrates a passion for creating a lasting impact in the community, such as being a supporter of the Make-A-Wish Foundation, launching his own charitable nonprofit called the Max Crosby Foundation, that focuses on teen substance abuse intervention, youth health and wellness, animal rescue, and abuse prevention. And Prom Valley Trojan girls basketball are at home today, taking on Arbor View High School JV game that's in progress. And varsity starts at 6.30. And that's your look at sports on News 25. Thanks, Mikey. Coming up after the break, we'll talk about the flu shot in your health report. Stay with us. You're watching News 25. Local coverage you can count on. News 25 is brought to you by Mountain West Lawyer, Injury Attorneys, 727-9500. Welcome back to News 25. Every year, a new flu shot is created based on different factors, like which types of the virus are expected to be the most common. But that could change in the future. Cleveland Clinic researchers are working on a flu vaccine that wouldn't need to be modified annually. To develop a next generation vaccine, the goal has been to come up with a vaccine strategy that work against all strains that circulate now, as well as circulate in the future. I've been strains that don't even yet exist. Dr. Ted Ross says by making a vaccine that covers all the flu strains, people would have immunity both now and in the future. It would also eliminate annual flu shots. So rather than having to get a shot every year, he says you would only need to get one every couple of years. That convenience may also encourage more people to get vaccinated. Dr. Ross notes that the vaccine will have to be updated once in a while and won't be able to eradicate the flu completely. That's because the virus is present in animals as well. The viruses that have been eradicated or close to eradications for humans are strains of viruses that only circulate in people. Example is smallpox. Smallpox was only a human pathogen, and therefore we were able to eradicate it. As long as there's a zoonotic reservoir out there, we'll probably never get rid of flu. Dr. Ross says research for this vaccine has been in the works for 20 years. Clinical trials will begin at the end of 2024, and if all goes well, the vaccine will be made public. News 25 Weather Cam is brought to you by Lerner and Rowe Injury Attorney's Office in Pahrump. In a wreck, need a check? Call 702-877-1500. Ooh, a little breezy this afternoon, huh? I wonder if it's blowing in warmer weather. I guess John will tell us that in a few minutes. He's up next with weather. News 25 weather is brought to you by Dairy Council of Nevada. Undeniably delicious, undeniably dairy. Enjoy what's real. Hi, good evening, Nevada. It's John Kohler from the KPVM Channel 25 Weather Studios, all up and down the Ace Country Radio Network and your computer and mobile device at www.kpvm.tv. It's worldwide, it's live, and it's eight big channels of free entertainment, and you'll love it. All right, currently 62 degrees, 
Fallon checking in at 64. Carson City at 57. That's just a jumble from yesterday when they were all weather triplets locked up at 55. So weather's moving around. Out in Tonopah and Goldfield, we have weather twins at 55. That doesn't happen mid-state very much. Beatty always outstanding at 66. Amber goes up to 71. Uh, are they the hot spot? No. Las Vegas at 68. Are they the hot spot? No, they're not. Death Valley doesn't count. They're in California at 78. Check this out. I hear the Paradise of Peru. Wow, look at us. We got all the way up to 72 degrees today. We're the hot spot in the state. A couple of weather rarities. I just love when, when, when those happen. Uh, current temperature is 64 degrees. Sun rose this morning in all its glory. Hope and promise at 640. Setting this evening at 428. And man, did it get dark in a hurry. Clear skies tonight. But we've got all kinds of clear uh, star watching tonight. So enjoying that. Humidity up to 34%. May see some clouds moving in. In fact, look at that cloudy day tomorrow. Uh, 61 degrees. We'll see a sunshiny day on Friday setting us up for the weekend with some wind at about 13 miles per hour. And that'll calm down directly on Saturday and Sunday. But boy, uh, temperatures dropping down to the mid and low 50s this weekend. Going to be a good weekend for a sweatshirt. Uh, Monday looks like temperatures up in the mid 60s. Pretty good. Sunshiny days on Tuesdays and Wednesday to look forward to. Not too bad. Uh, next seven day stretch. We'll take it. All right, back to the desk. Here's Missy Kohler. Thanks, John. That's going to do it for us here at News 25 tonight. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Missy Kohler. Have a great night.